Hello and welcome to Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is a reading for Libra. If Libra is your sun, moon, or rising sign, this is your reading. Please leave a comment, hit the like button, consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I might provide. And remember, Libra, that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. There's the art or temperance card. This is, um, well, this is a very kind of a Libra card, right? There's a lot of balance in this card. There's a lot of um, blending together the appropriate forces. And then we also have that strength or lust card. This is really already a very powerful, powerful reading. Wow, all major arcana on the horizontal plane, on the, um, on the horizontal axis of the path of the dove. It's all major arcana. This is pretty extraordinary. Um, also, if there's anything you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know. Okay, we're going to finish up Path of the Serpent here. And we see some court cards over here. So this is very interesting. All right. Now let's do our mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Smith Weight deck. And just select one card. We're going to put the frog right on top. We're not going to look at that until the very end. And hopefully at the end of the reading, that will, you know, tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we're looking for at the end of the reading. Okay, so major, 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 major. Uh, we've got some air. <clears throat> we've got some water. We've got some earth. And we got some fire. So we have a pretty, uh, a, a pretty decent balance of everything. Very heavy on the major arcana in terms of your daily life. I wouldn't be surprised if you're really feeling lately um, that uh, spirit is really working in your life right now in very practical ways, right? Putting things in front of you that you need, giving you um, kind of what you require in the moment. Um, good or bad, whether it's a lesson or a blessing, um, you're getting exactly what you need right now. And I think that uh, you're kind of in sync with life. You're in, in harmony with the world. And we've got the art or temperance card. So I think right now you're in this, um, you're in a type of energy that is really looking to uh, balance yourself, right? You're looking with that very, I know that's a very kind of Libra cliche, right? The balance. Um, but I think you're really, you're really looking to harmonize the spiritual and the physical, right? The heavenly and the earthly life. And I think you're really seeing how the, the heavenly life, the spiritual world is manifesting in your physical life, in your activities, the people that you meet, um, the energies that you uh, experience, uh, the love and the grace that you see out in the world. Okay. So I think that I think that there is a very strong path forward for you right now. And I think that it involves kind of a difficult decision or a difficult um, going through a fire, so to speak, right? This is, this is the art card. So it's about the, um, the right shades of colors, the right blending and mixing of our resources. But this card is also the temperance card. And temperance will sometimes mean... Um, you know, taking the middle road, kind of learning moderation, learning how to pull ourselves back a little bit from, you know, uh, some kind of intensity or extreme. But tempering also means to strengthen by fire, right? Uh, like a blacksmith might do. So I kind of feel like you're in a challenging situation right now, but it is leading to such amazing things. Like you have to go through this because it's strengthening you, it's tempering you, uh, it's teaching you some valuable lessons, and it's really kind of giving you the, uh, the strength and the insight to create a very successful life. Now, looking at the path of the serpent, we end everything with this ace of discs. Perfect ending, 
right? This is the ending that's also the beginning, right? This is like the seed of your future. We're ending by creating this seed, and this seed is going to grow and blossom and bear fruit that is your successful life. Now, I don't know if this is career-related. I kind of feel like this might have to do with um, your relationships um, generally, work relationships, home, friendships, family, your loved ones, all that sort of stuff, right? Uh, colleagues and coworkers, uh, maybe in some kind of community organization or maybe in a religious organization, a church, a lodge, a temple, an order, something along these lines. We do see these court cards down here, which don't always represent other people but they represent your energies, especially the knight and the princess, okay? That might represent more of, of your energy and the way that you might be trying to connect with other people or to improve your relationships, improve the dynamic that you have with other people. So, a lot going on here with the art or temperance card. The art or temperance card is also graced by this lust or strength card. Uh, this is your, really your inner fortitude to, to withstand this fire, right? We're going through this fire energy, this challenging time in our life. And it is not crushing you. It's not burning you. It's not destroying you. It's not tearing you down. It's strengthening you, okay? So this is your ability to withstand the fire. And this is also the result of the fire, right? That strength. Um, I don't know which Greek myth it was where I think, uh, I think it was Hera maybe, um, was dipping someone in the fire, you know, holding them in the fire. Uh, I think it was Achilles was held in the fire by his heel to be, uh, made immortal. But the heel where, uh, I think it was Hera, was it Hera? Uh, where she, or maybe Athena, where she was holding him by the heel, that part there, didn't become immortal. So that was his one weakness, his one vulnerable place. That's where we get the, the phrase, you know, someone's Achilles heel. But that is the fire. So you're being held in the fire right now um, to, to fortify your spirit, right? To, um, to maybe, uh, to, to crystallize this immortality, right? So it, it's a very important fire, and I don't know exactly what is it's pertaining to. We see this empress in the background, and we'll, we'll come back to the fire as we go through the reading. We've got the empress in the background here. That is the third mystery of the tarot. Now, the empress, um, it could be related to a maternal figure. So there might be something, um, this fire that we're in might have something to do with uh, you know, a mom, grandma, an, an older sibling, an aunt, someone that maybe had a bit of a maternal or motherly kind of role in our lives. It could, though, be pertaining to you as that kind of mother energy, okay? Now, it doesn't have to be gender-specific, right? Um, but I feel like there is a very strong sense of uh, giving care, of nurturing, of, you know, uh, of... Um, of uh, bringing someone back to health. Does that make sense? I'm getting this feeling like, um, well, it's kind of like a nurse or a healthcare kind of vibe, a doctoring kind of vibe, but it's more in a, uh, a maternal context, okay? So I don't know if you've been caring for a sick loved one um, or, you know, uh, God, goddess forbid, if you're the sick, lo sick loved one. Um, it feels to me like there is something like that going on. Now, I'm no medical expert. This isn't any kind of health advice or medical diagnoses at all. I'm not qualified to do that. Um, but what I can do is read the energy, and it feels like it's, it's a difficult situation um, related to someone's health or well-being, right? And I get that closeness, like a maternal energy. So I feel like it's a very close family member. Okay. And what I kind of am getting the sense of this, this person, now maybe they are this water sign person. Maybe that's why we have this water energy over here. 
It could be a, a water sign person. I kind of feel like your relationship with them, that is kind of your Achilles heel, right? That is, um, it, it's almost really the, the kind of, um, the, the myth is almost right here. This is what, a Hera or Athena uh, kind of holding you by the heel in the fire in order to create this, um, you know, mostly immortal being. But there's still that one weakness, that one soft spot, your one vulnerability. And that could be your relationship with this person to begin with, right? The relationship with Hera or Athena or whichever goddess it was. I hope that's making sense. I'm not trying to be too abstract or too metaphysical here. Um, I feel like there are decisions that need to be made about this situation. And this is, again, part of this fire energy. Part of, and it's a very, um, it's a necessary initiation into this phase of your life, right? So it's not something that I think is tremendously unique to any of us. I think we're all going to go through it at some point. And it's, this, it's the initiation into the next segment of, of your life. Okay. Um, and of course, I, I do pray for everyone to um, have a restoration to health and wealth and well-being and wellness. Um, it is what I pray for daily for everybody to be um, alleviated of their suffering and to return to a happy and healthy life. Uh, I do think that there are decisions that need to be made, okay? And um, I, wonder, I wonder if these decisions are all kind of resting on you, and that's part of the fire. You're the one that's responsible. You're the one that, that has to make the tough choices, okay? And I, I kind of I feel like the choices... The choices aren't really yours to make, or what I mean by that is um, nature is going to take its course. Spirit is going to, um, spirit already has a plan, right? So whatever you choose, it's just kind of like giving you something to do, something to focus on, to feel like you're in control, right? But what spirit has planned is, is beyond any of us to comprehend, beyond any of us to change or to decide upon, you know? So I feel like this air energy is a way for you to keep kind of keep busy, um, to, to keep focused on something, to keep feeling like you're doing something productive and proactive and you're contributing, you're making decisions, and there's some bit of control in the situation. But what we see with major arcana is that this is energy that's not in our control, right? This is, spirit's got this, right? Spirit is taking care of everything. We have maybe this, I don't, I don't want to call it an illusion of control, but we have this little bit of um, awareness, a little bit of kind of the, the conscious activity, a little bit of control, maybe over our reactions. And we, we have a, a control over how we interact with people and how we, um, how we accept the situation, how we deal with it, how we express ourselves. That sort of thing. But as far as the actual energy goes, um, I feel like this fire is tempering you, is making you stronger, and is preparing you for the next phase of your life. Because again, this card was kind of the, the beginning of the beginning. right? It's the end of the path of the serpent, but it's the beginning of the next phase of your life. It is the beginning of the next uh, growth, abundance, right? This is the seed that we're planting that's going to come to fruition. So, the hermit energy in the immediate future. Um, I feel like this situation, this learning experience, this fire, this furnace that we're in, is providing us with a lot of lessons, okay? And I'm not gonna try to go through what they all could be, but I think one of the primary lessons is how to be more reliant on ourselves, right? I mean, this could be just the ending of a relationship. It could be, you know, the Empress, it could be talking about uh, a romantic relationship. 
doesn't necessarily mean family, right? And doesn't mean anyone is transcending the earthly, earthly plane. It could mean that, um, you know, somebody has left home or we have left home, right? Something like that. It doesn't have to be an injury or an illness. I just wanted to make that clear that this isn't uh, necessarily that specific, okay? Um, I know I, I provide some details, but these are examples of the type of energy and the way the energies interact more than it is an absolute certainty of the details, right? And that's why I need your, your help interpreting these cards. So the hermit energy is teaching us to be self-reliant. This is kind of like if our, if our kids left home, uh, this is kind of us, you know, with that, that empty nest kind of syndrome, right? But we're learning to find our inner light. We're learning that happiness and joy and creativity and, and spirit comes from within. It doesn't come from what we have or who's in our life or what we have around us. It comes from within. And people will always come and go. Objects, possessions will always come and go. We have to find that which remains, right? That which never comes and goes is, is always there. Right? And that's the lamp, that is spirit, that is our connection with the divine. And it is through this process, this fire, whatever the exact situation might be for you, that is teaching you how to find that inner light, that lamp, that which remains within you and doesn't come and go. The constant, the infinite, right? the spirit. And I think that's the lesson of the hermit. And it's kind of playing out through this idea of, you know, somebody uh, leaving our home or our kids are leaving or we're leaving our, our parental figures. And we're kind of, uh, we're developing this independence in a way. We're relying on spirit, you know. Um, so we're, we're dependent on nothing except spirit, right? Does that make sense? So it's very, very potent energy here. And I think it is a major initiation, like I keep saying. It's a major, major transition into the next phase of your life. Okay. And it's something that is, um, you know, it's one of these uh, big kind of rites of passage that I think everybody will go through this energy in some form. In some form. Okay. Okay. Um, I think in a very general way, everyone will go through the, the, the furnace, the fire, the trial, the, the, the tribulation of separating from this maternal energy into this kind of self-reliant hermit kind of energy, right? Um, and now the hermit doesn't mean that we're like, we're distancing ourselves from our family or we are isolating ourselves or anything like that. This is a discovery of our own independence, right? Our separate existence from this Empress energy. Now, Path of the Serpent, we start with the Knight of Cups. This is your general energy. Now, this is you extending out to others, okay? This is you taking the, uh, the lessons, taking the experience that we've been through here with this fire, the independence that we've found, the, the dependence on spirit that we have forged, maybe with this strength in this fire. It's taking that and now we're seeking to extend ourselves out to others. So really it could be that we've separated from this empress energy and now we're discovering these kind of empress-like energies within ourselves. Um, so it could be literally a, a, um, a separating ourselves from our maternal figures, our, our parents or something, grandparents. Finding our own light, our own voice, and then extending that out into the world, right? And this could happen at any, any phase of life, any age, right? Any, any station in life. Um, we never know when this energy is exactly is going to begin to play out or, or activate in our lives, okay? These archetypes. So then we kind of, we find our own voice. We find our own way of expressing, uh, you know, this energy. We're expressing this fire energy. We're expressing this empress energy, this love, this nurturing, this support. 
And I think it's, um, it's kind of a new thing for us because we're usually doing that in connection with this Empress energy, whatever this exactly represents for you. But now we're kind of doing it all on our own with this, the Hermit energy instead, right? So it's a little bit of a new thing and it's a little bit uh, exhilarating because this is like a, a newly discovered independence. And now you can extend your energy in whatever direction you choose based on your own will, right? Based on your own uh, connection with spirit, your own inner light. And I think that we are discovering new and novel ways to discover and appreciate love and beauty in the world around us. We have the Princess of Cups next. And the Princess of Cups is, is doing things our own way, even when other people may have opinions about it, right? Um, other people may not really understand what we're doing or agree with it. Friends, family members, maybe this Empress energy still is, is kind of is disapproving of what we do. They have opinions, of course, everyone does. But we're doing things, we're operating from our own center. So we're going to try things based on our own spirit and how we're expressing our own soul, our own fire. And not everybody is going to agree with that. It's, it's not going to be the same as everyone else. Right? So this is a lot of trying new things. This is a lot, this is a more self-directed life trying to make connections, trying to express our creative side, our emotional side, trying to express what we've discovered in this fire, finding this inner light, um, and now sharing it with the world in whatever way we do, through our work, through our art, through our interactions, right? Through our life and our choices. And um, I think it's important that we keep we keep doing that, that we don't, we don't succumb to the opinions of others and change how we feel or, or how we express ourselves. Because then we're right back into this dependent connection that we started with. So we have to stay independent, even if we don't really know what we're doing. Even if we're still kind of learning as we go, we're still kind of getting our sea legs, right? Now the next card is the, the 10 of wands here. Now, this is in the position of what we don't want. And this card could sometimes represent a codependent relationship. And this is exactly what could result from this Princess of Cups. We're now acquiescing to the, the opinions of others. And this puts us in a state where now we are kind of dependent on those opinions to give us an idea of what we should do. And, you know, this is entering any kind of relationship, even if it's different or similar to this Empress relationship that we have. Any kind of relationship where there is that codependency. Now, we're not looking for that. We're looking for independence. We're looking for dependence on spirit only. Spirit dependence, right? Um... So this card is in the position of what we don't want. Okay. And this is, this is a fire energy, a will, a creativity, an ambition, a confidence that is so far removed from spirit, from this inner light, that the only thing it has to cling to now is the spirit of someone else, the light of someone else. Right? And it creates that codependency. So we don't want that. So this card, we, we're trying to avoid that card. Even if we end up making mistakes and we're uncertain about where we're going and what direction we're taking and how we're behaving and the things that we are uh, experiencing, the things that we are, are immersing ourselves in, it's better to do that from your own center, from your own light, and make a mistake than to kind of succeed, but um, you're just following somebody else's direction, right? 
waiting for their opinion, their influence, their fire energy to kind of give a direction to your fire energy. Anyway, the next card is this ace of uh, pentacles here. And this is what we are involving ourselves in. This is, um, you're kind of taking your fire energy. I'm looking for a, a good example. You're kind of, you're taking this fire energy. Let's just forget that it's, it's a codependent energy. You're taking your, your spear, your lance, your arrows, and you're shooting them right at this target. Now, we don't know what the prize is for this target. We don't know what's behind this door. We don't know what this seed will grow into. So this is this card is kind of the it's the end but it's also the beginning. This is the finish line that is really just the starting point for the next race, right? This is uh you've done all of the preparatory work. Now you're actually ready to start planting. Right? So this is the beginning of this next segment, the next phase of your life. After this rite of passage, this initiation, now the, the real work begins, right? Once you've reached this state of, of kind of, um, of independence, of, of adepthood, of, um, you know, self-determination, self-direction, self-creation, spirit dependence, not codependence, uh, now we can really begin working on what our future is going to be, Right? Uh, where is it that your soul is taking you? What is it that you're planting and what are you growing? What is the fruit going to look like from this, this tree? Well, maybe the mystery card will help us out with that. You didn't forget about it. Thank you, Mr. Frog. <clears throat> I don't know what this card could be. Um, it would be kind of ironic if it's another Empress card. Let's just find out. I don't have much of a prediction for this. It's a three of swords. And these cards are very tiny, aren't they? Uh, three of swords. I, I'm wondering if you are actually helping other people to deal with their trauma, to, to process their, their pain and their suffering and their trauma. So maybe all of this kind of caregiving energy that we started with Maybe this is something that you are actually, um, you know, you have uh, this desire now to, to immerse yourself in that world in this kind of new spirit-dependent way. So maybe you are going to be uh, fulfilling that role for others. Maybe you're going to, maybe you're going into healthcare. Maybe you are in healthcare. And this is uh, perhaps going to give you a new direction, uh, you know, the next phase of your career or something like that. But I, I feel like maybe it's, it could even be more like mental, emo emotional health, you know, than physical health. Uh, I feel like in some way you are processing your own trauma, your own memories, your own kind of pain and suffering, which is probably your Achilles heel, right? With this, this maybe maternal energy. Um, so you're healing yourself, and I feel like you're also trying to help others heal. Okay, And I think that we may have had that similar energy for Libra in the past few readings. So it seems like it's a strong theme for you. It seems like it's a very prominent motif, this idea of helping others heal their trauma, helping to alleviate some suffering in others in the world. Right. That's very interesting to me. Now, we're going to do an extended reading. If you would like to stick around for that, just click up here. And that'll give you access to all of the extended readings, not just for Libra, but for all of the zodiac signs. So you can watch your other placements. You can get the extended. Leave me some comments. Let me know how you're doing, how you're feeling. Definitely hit the like button. Consider subscribing to the channel. I want to thank you for taking this journey with me. And thank you for being the most important part of Dove and Serpent Tarot.